Welcome to Jesus Changes Everything, a daily podcast dedicated to providing a fresh look at the ancient and glorious truth that Jesus not only reigns, but is busy about the business of bringing all things under subjection, that celebrates the wonder and the glory that he has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. I've told you before, I'm sure I'll tell you again, that I tend to be a collector. When I find some, well, some book, some actor, some director, some singer that I like, I tend to keep going back to the well. I'm excited that, uh, I don't know, in a month or so, I'll probably be back with you in a curating your book library talking about another Malcolm Gladwell book because I've just got another one the other day. But I'm here today in this curating your book library segment to speak about uh, a book that I recently finished. The book is called Facing the Mountain. And the author's name is Daniel James Brown, and I have spoken about him before because I've covered in this segment some time ago, quite a long time ago, his book called The Boys in the Boat. And that particular book is uh, given to us as is his style and a sort of narrative style of nonfiction. The Boys in the Boat tells the story of the crew team at the University of Washington who made it all the way to the Olympics in 1936 and had a kind of uh, Jesse James-like experience there. Did I say Jesse James? Gosh, Jesse Owens-like experience. (laughs) Mercy. Well, this book is, uh, again, exceedingly good. He's just a, just a fine, fine writer. And one of the things that he does especially well is he sort of zeroes in and pulls back out. He has close-ups and then he has broad shots and then close-ups and then broad shots. This particular book deals with uh, the response of several families of Japanese ancestry uh, to the events uh, of World War II. Some of these family uh, members ended up in these uh, camps, these internment camps, uh, that Roosevelt ordered um, early on in the war. And eventually a group of these folks ended up being able to uh, serve in the armed services for the uh, United States uh, Army. And so much of the book uh, actually recounts the heroism of this particular uh, company or battalion, I'm not sure the right word for it, uh, that's made up uh, pretty much exclusively of Americans of Japanese ancestry. And uh, it, and as Daniel typically does, he sort of uh, gives us a glimpse into the motivations of the characters in the story, though they're not characters in the story. This is all very historical. The real flesh and blood people who were faced with uh, this daunting challenge. I want you to imagine this. Imagine that the whole country, including the government, that you are a citizen of, that you have been a part of since your birth, looks down on you and is fearful that you are not loyal to this country but are loyal to the country where your uh, ancestors came from. Now, they're so worried about this that they take your parents and take their, you know, move them out of their homes and away from their businesses and exclude them from certain areas in the West Coast and round them up and put them in these internment camps. And now here comes the same government asking if you would... uh, A, sign a loyalty oath, and B, like to serve in the armed services. You get this tension. Brown just 
lays it out there so you can see it clearly, this tension of you know, why would I serve this country that's treated me so badly? And yet, on the other hand, if I do serve this country that I do love, then maybe that will change things. It's a great struggle. And, and perhaps uh, an, one of the stories uh, of uh, Gordon, I can't remember Gordon's last name. Uh, Gordon was a young fellow uh, who was a, a Quaker uh, who practiced passive resistance to all of these various programs from the government, including uh, a, a loyalty oath that Japanese were asked to sign, Japanese ancestry american citizens were asked to sign and there he is again having this tension well of course i'm loyal to this country uh, and i'm loyal to the uh, principles that founded this country which excludes the ability to judge me on the basis of my ancestors so he sees it and i think he's right he sees it as downright un-american to allow himself to sign this paper that says he's loyal to America. This is Nazi style stuff. And so he doesn't, but he doesn't resist. He doesn't firebomb anybody. He's very polite. Uh, and he just goes and does what they tell him to do. And they don't know what to do with him because he won't do what they ask, but he will uh, submit to their punishments uh, without any pushback. So that's one of the stories. But the I, would, I don't know if I'd say the bulk of the book, but uh, a, a good percentage of the book is that part that follows these soldiers and their unbelievable exploits. I don't again remember whether it's a company or a battalion or something else, but I remember the number. They, they, the, uh, Brown explained that this particular group of soldiers, these Japanese-Americans, represented 0.11% of all the American soldiers who fought in World War II. And yet this battalion of Japanese American soldiers represented 4.4% of all those who received some particular, it might be the Congressional Medal of Honor, some other uh, medal that I also don't recall. They were unbelievably heroic. And in fact, this particular unit would sort of be called in at multiple times in multiple places to rescue uh, other units that were in particular trouble. In fact, a big part of the story is their rescue of what is called the Lost Battalion. This was a group of infantrymen, uh, all of whom were from Texas, who uh, I'm not exactly clear on how this happened, but somehow uh, they had advanced and they maybe they were outflanked or something, but they have ended up surrounded uh, by German soldiers. By the way, you should know that these Japanese soldiers... Uh, Japanese-American soldiers served in the European theater of the war. So these Texans have got themselves surrounded and they're trying to keep the Germans at bay and they're tired and they're weary and they're running out of ammo and medicine and everything else that they need and they're getting pummeled and uh, this unit of uh, Japanese-Americans is sent in to rescue them and they lost... Uh, I don't know, some incredible high percentage of their unit. In fact, they lost more men in their rescue of the men, uh, the Texans, than there were men of the Texans. That is, I think they rescued something like 200 Texans and more than 200 uh, suffered in that battle. You know, it's a... It's a refreshing thing to read about racial struggles in the past with people who on both sides are trying to figure out how to get past where they came from, how to get past their history, to discover, to, to learn, to watch as they Ah, what's the right word for it? As they, well, persevere and eventually win over those who hated them. 
Now, I'm not saying that this is a direct parallel with racial issues that we struggle with in our day, but I am saying there's overlap. I am saying there's much to be learned. Again, Daniel James Brown is a born storyteller. He captures your attention. He holds your attention. Uh, he actually is taught writing at uh, both San Jose State University and at Stanford University. He now lives outside of Seattle, and I trust and hope uh, he's working on something new, something that I'm looking forward to reading. Now, I'd love to know if you have any experience. There are still a couple of his books that uh, I have not read, The Indifferent Stars Above and Under a Flaming Sky. So uh, I've got more to add to my collection. But I'd love to hear if you all have any experience reading Daniel James Brown. The Boys in the Boat was a, a New York Times bestseller and did very well. Uh, I suspect uh, Facing the Mountain will also do very well. But I'd love to hear uh, if you have shared that experience. But also, you know, guys that maybe you collect, guys that you discovered, and you just keep going back for more and for more and for more because they're just so good. I'm a huge fan of Daniel James Brown. I'm a huge fan of his writing and his storytelling, and I'm grateful for him in telling the story. But also, because uh, it's a great story, well told, uh, I came away just profoundly grateful uh, for the soldiers who sacrificed so much and who had such a deep commitment to uh, our founding ideals. Uh, that they were willing to make these sacrifices. We have a lot of ugly places in our history. It's nice to read about the triumph of good over evil, whether that is these Japanese Americans triumphing over the prejudice of those around them or the Americans triumphing over uh, the Nazi powers. So please check it out, and as always, let me know what you think. Send me a message, send me an email. RC, uh, no, hello, RCJR at gmail.com. Hello, RCJR at gmail.com with your comments. I'd love to uh, see them and maybe perhaps share them later on. So that's Daniel James Brown facing the mountain. Check it out. You've been listening to the Jesus Changes Everything podcast, a production of Dunamis Fellowship, the teaching outreach of Dr. R.C. Sproul Jr. If you've enjoyed this podcast, we encourage you to subscribe, which you can do at all the usual outlets, to tell your friends, and to spread the word. To learn more about the work of Dunamis Fellowship, please visit R.C. Sproul Jr. Join us next time on Jesus Changes Everything.